Hi, my name is Mads Barnkopf from Kaiser Power Electronics, and today I'm here with my kids. Hi, my name is April. Hi, my name's Elfred. And we're going to build a kit that I got from uh, when I was hired in by CERN and Niels Bohr Institute to do a tester coil show at the Roskiller Festival 2022. We have the kit here. It's a small case with all components inside. And then we have the plants that was made for young people to be able to assemble this uh, while half drunk or hang over. So these two pages are hopefully enough and illustrated good enough to do this project. While I'll explain the plants, the kids will unpack the two pieces here. So it's uh, pretty much illustrated with colors and the different components. Uh, there is a bit of um, bird nest soldering to be done here, so I made a small PCB for that. Other than that, it's all color-coded wires. So the instruction itself um, starts with uh, watch out, the soldering iron is hot. Wires together and just solder them to the legs which are pre-soldered to the components. You have to pay attention to the transistor and connect everything but the display. And then yeah, call uh, the instructor once, once you get to the display. And they will also do the gluing and mounting of the Geiger Müller tube and also connecting the power, which will be from a power bank, which makes sense since this was made for people at a festival lying around in tents. And the intention with, with this kit was, of course, to teach something about science. That's the whole reason why CERN and Nitzbohr Institute is at Roskilde Festival with the Science Pavilion. So we're about ready to do the soldering and the distribution of roles in this project has been made that April will do the soldering and Alfred will help preparing the wires. And let's see how that goes. We have the plans. Let's get going. Yes. First, we will solder the circuit board. While April solders the circuit board, I have a cup of coffee and Alfred will do the wire twisting over there. The removal of the soldering smoke. Safety first. Alfred, can you cut those that has been soldered? First the soldering iron, then weight, then add solder. That one over there, that's not good. Yeah, you can see the hole in the circuit board. Okay, and now Alfred, you can use the cutter to cut the legs. Yeah. Yes. Try again. Good. Great. Excellent. You complete this. Seems like a third hand is needed now. And then we just use this one to hold the other hot end. And Alfred, you can continue with the black wires. This? Yes. Try again. And next one. Yeah. 
hvis man skal lave det, så tager man sådan en lille plæt derhen. Så du ved, at jeg kommer og røger rundt med det. That's fine, April. Turn it around. Yes. Yeah. No? Then what about that end? Oh. It goes like this. Yes, correct. We have to solder in that one there. Maybe turn the circuit board around. So you can see what you're doing. Give yourself some room. I think doing this with kids is even more frustrating than doing it with drunk 20 year olds. Okay, great. Everything is finished here. Yes. Then we can move on to the next. Yes, that is the buzzer. First the iron, then the solder. So now we can add the black and red. Maybe we should do the yellow first, because it's in the middle. Yellow. Then pre-solder the wire first. Then we need our little circuit board here. Now we have to identify on the circuit board that black one goes at the end of the resistor. This or this. The kids have by now abandoned the project and I think that proves a very fine point that doing electronics with your kids will have to be on their terms. The concept of detecting radiation was simply too abstract for them to see the goal of the project. It really has to manifest itself in something physical that they can see, touch and interact with. So I will finish the project. They actually got pretty far. There's only two wires left to be soldered. And of course, there's all the looping wires that need to connect to the microcontroller and the display at last. But overall, not much to do to finish the project, actually. Everything is now put together. We can take our Geiger Müller tube and insert it here. And we need to pay attention to the plus sign here that goes on this part. And then we can discuss the orientation of the PCB here that, um, that will just have to get stuffed into the box in some kind of way. I think the general consensus at the festival was that this would just get hot glued into the box to avoid any short circuits, which you can see is a quite, quite the challenge to avoid that in this setup. But I think we'll just power it up like this so we can actually see what's inside and see the display and also plug in the power. 
Oh yeah. Something happens here. Okay, we have a small radiation symbol. Green LED on the high voltage supply. Let's turn this around. Zero CPM and zero microsieverts per hour. For a sanity check, I took my URAT monitor, Geiger counter here, switched out the tubes, and I tried out the tube from this kit in the URAT monitor, and it works just fine. So the issue is not with a faulty GM tube. I found a minor error that the black wire here was mounted directly to the left side of the transistor and not through the resistor to the middle. So moving that over here should probably fix our problem. So let's turn it on. Science Pavilion Geiger 2 counter in the display. We can hear it beeping away. Yeah. If I could stop talking, we could hear it. So let's uh, check out the web server. We find it as a Wi-Fi access point. Go to its IP address. And we can see here that uh, this is from the Science Pavilion as Roskill Festival 2022. We just about see here the average count and the average rate. And my phone that keeps telling me that there's no internet connection on this Wi-Fi. So let's uh, just try to test it with a radioactive source. I happen to have an old instrument from a World War II warplane. And for those interested, let's take a closer look at the flight instrument here. It is a artificial horizon. And it works by vacuum from the plane itself. It is marked 4th of November 1947, so it is a late World War II instrument. I forgot the name of the bomber plane, but I'm pretty sure that this exact model were only used in um, a few models, uh, American bomber planes. Or was it the British? I forgot. I'm pretty sure it is an American instrument. Yeah, it's from Toledo, Ohio. So, bank climb a gyro control for S4 automatic pilot. But let's uh, try to point it directly at the GM tube again. And we can hear it clicking away nicely. We can also see the difference between the instantaneous real-time measurement and the average on the web server that while this measures two and a half thousand CPM, we see an average from our start of measurement to 900. And also the accumulated rate per hour is higher here. So if I move this away, we can see it falls down immediately, but our average measurement over the time here stays yeah, an average. So that doesn't move that fast. We should actually see it falling by now. It is not dangerous to possess, as, as long as I do not break the glass or pull a vacuum on it to suck out radioactive dust. Um, it's just for show and yeah, collecting. And the only hazard this poses is if you eat the entire instrument. You will have other problems than the radioactive material. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little project. It was a nice gift from the Niels Bohr Institute and CERN while I was hired in to do a Tesla coil show at the Roskilde Festival and that is now two and a half years ago. So not in a bad time to actually finish that project. But uh, also check out the video from the Roskilde Festival show where that is uh, some quite awesome footage and I had a really great time there. So until next time, see you.